so now we know what the genetic code is but how what is the exact mechanism that those codons on mrna molecule gets translated into an amino acid sequence of a protein how does it happen and what is this process known as this is known as translation and let's see how does this happen but before that what are proteins so proteins are made up of amino acids linked together by peptide bonds um what you are watching on your screen is basically a typical amino acid structure where you can see an amino group and on one hand you can see a carboxylic group the r represents 20 variable side chains which we would discuss in a separate topic now um what are the key players involved in in the in the translational in this whole process of translation so one is ribosomes which basically are the sites are the factories where proteins are made one is mrna so mrna is basically we have already seen that it copies the genetic information from the dna and it has codons on it and then transfer rnas um we will just take a look at transfer rnas but transfer rnas have huge importance because they are the reason that they they link they are they are the bridge between ribosomes and messenger rna and ribosomal rna which basically helps uh, and is the constituent part of ribosomes ribosomes is our part ribosomal rna and part proteins and m amino acyl trna synthetase which is an enzyme uh, how does that work we'll also see in in a, in a brief moment so ribosomes synthesize proteins by reading the nucleotide sequence of an mrna and polymerizing amino acids in a n to c direction so what do we mean by n to c direction um we just saw that on an amino acid we ha we had one amino group and one carboxylic group so when the peptide bonds are being formed they are joined together but one uh, the starting amino acid has always its amino terminal free because there is no peptide bond on the other side and on the right hand side then you will see that there would be if you go on from n then it will end in a free carboxylic group so that's what we mean by in n to c direction and what are ribosomes how what what do they look like what they are made up of so ribosomes are compact ribonucleoprotein particles they are found in the cytosols of all cells in the matrix of mitochondria and in the stroma of chloroplasts um there is a reason to tell you that where ribosomes are located now if they are present in cytosols of all cells and if i start talking about eukaryotic cells then messenger rna has to come out of the nucleolus of the nuclei and through the nuclear pore and ultimately it will be translated in the cytosol but in bacteria we don't have that issue their presence in mitochondria means because we know that mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cells and that means that mitochondria can produce its own proteins um we will later see a case study that how scientists in the modern world are using mitochondria to make novel polymers and also in the stroma of chloroplast now if you look at ribosomes there is a bit of difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic ribosomes so prokaryotic ribosomes uh, all the both of the ribosomes have two subunits if i talk about so there is one small subunit known as 30s and then the larger subunit is 50s so s is a swedberg constant here and basically that is sort of tell you the sedimentation rate 
of these particular subunits and if we talk about eukaryotic ribosomes they, these are 60s and 40s but when they combine together then the weight difference is 70s and 80s so because sedimentation also depends upon how how the shape looks like uh, so it's not additive as such but if you look at smaller subunit or, or or any subunit so the larger subunit has only one rna and you can basically see that the total number of proteins alongside is 31 so you can go through this table and ultimately see that how they vary in their composition and ultimately that affects the function but how does that affect the function we'll see in a bit so ribosomes may be free in the cytosol or attached to the surface of endoplasmic reticulum i do not want to discuss yet that how endoplasmic reticulum why endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes attached to it we'll see it later at the moment i want to just show you that how ribosomes synthesize uh, proteins but one thing i would like to mention that we did see the great experiment did by nirenberg that they were able to produce uh, polyphenyl alanine in outside the like outside the cellular environment they were able to do that experiment in vitro now how why they how did ribosomes worked in vitro so ribosomes are very capable of spontaneous self assembly which is which is amazing given the complexity of the molecule okay now we all know about francis crick who basically was the co-discoverer of the structure of dna and he reasoned that this information gap between mrna and ribosomes there should be some sort of adapter molecules and now we know that those adapter molecules are transfer rna but now we have 20 amino acids so there needs to be at least 20 different sort of transfer rnas so that ultimately um, it would work but we can see that if codons are 64 then we need to for those 64 codons to work we need to have at least more than 64 anticodons now but where those anticodons are located that's the question and that's what we will see from the structure of transfer rna so transfer rna is clover leaf shaped it's a single stranded molecule with attachment site at one end for an amino acid iske ek side ke upar amino acid laga hota hai aur wo kaise lagta hai wo bhi abhi aapko dikhate hain and on the opposite end it has three nucleotide bases called the anti codon so jo aapke paas codon tha ye uske sath aake jud jayega aur wo kis tarah read karega again base complementarity ki basis pe but it would be known as anti codon now uh lekin iske sath ek amino acid juda hoga uh so here you are watching this structure and you can see that this is the site where amino acid is attached this is the site where you it is reading a code on gag and on the complementary basis it has cuc so this is uh, very important to understand that how the how the anti codon and codon works now when you would be going through the text you will also notice that some people say, say that transfer rnas are l shaped and they are right when you look look at them sideways you see that they have and they have sort of an inverted l uh, if i can if i can draw so they have sort of an inverted l now now we also talk about amino acyl uh, synthetase so what does it do it this is an amino acid known as tryptophan now that tryptophan has to bind to the transfer rna and it only binds to the transfer rna with the help of adenosine triphosphate and ultimately it's linked to a transfer rna which has an anticodon of acc 
which will ultimately bind to the messenger RNA UGG and ultimately in this way amino acids are brought together and ultimately polypeptide chain is formed. Now how does ribosome actually does it? So let's see this is a ribosome and ribosome has a binding site for messenger RNA. So what you are watching here is that this is messenger RNA and it has three binding sites for transfer RNA. One is E, other is P and the A site. So A site is the amino acyl tRNA site, P site is the peptidyl tRNA where the peptide bond is formed and E site is when one when amino acid is taken from it then that's the sort of exit site from there from where the from where the free transfer RNA ultimately moves out so as a transfer RNA which say amino acid chhin liya gaya hota hai which say utar liya gaya hota hai ultimately exit site se wo exit karta hai yani ke nikal jata hai um, in this particular diagram you can see it more clearly that how various sites are formed and this is the larger subunit and you can see the smaller subunit and ultimately in this picture it is it gets very clear that how uh, amino on the on the on the p site you can see that protein is being formed so you can see and this is the n terminal and it is going towards the c terminal so it will end at the c terminal and how it would end at the c terminal there is a stop codon so we talked about the codons for various amino acids but there is a stop codon as well actually there are three different codons which act as a stop codon but the first amino acid would, would always be methionine because AUG codes for methionine so and once AUG starts coding unless and until it meets a stop codon Translation continues.